There was a time when red velvet was all the rage. Then blue velvet cake came along, and now it's all about the green. This cake is light and velvety and covered with a white chocolate cream cheese frosting. Perfect for St. Patrick's Day or any time you want to mix it up and go green. On Eat the Trend, we find the latest food crazes, the hottest hybrids, and the most amazing culinary creations and show you how to make them at home. So to start this recipe, you're going to preheat your oven to 350 degrees and then spray your 6-inch round cake pans with a little bit of non-stick cooking spray. Now, today we're gonna make a layered green velvet cake, which to me, the more layers the better because you get frosting in every single bite. So to make the batter, we're gonna start by whisking our eggs, oil, buttermilk, vinegar, and vanilla. Once that's mixed together, we're gonna add our green food coloring. And if you wanted to, you could even add peppermint extract to the batter and make this a mint chocolate green velvet cake, which to me sounds so good. Now the reason why we're using buttermilk and vinegar, this is what activates our dry ingredients to create that light velvety texture. And actually red velvet cakes, that's why they were named red velvet, because the consistency is so light and fluffy. In a separate bowl, I already have my flour. I'm just gonna add our sugar, cocoa powder, and this is what's gonna give the cake that chocolate flavor, salt, and baking soda. And then whisk that together. Then we're gonna slowly add our flour mixture to the wet ingredients, and just add it a little at a time. This is gonna prevent getting any lumps in your batter. Oh, look how good this batter looks. All right, now it's time to pour the cake batter into our cake pans. And you wanna make sure you have an even amount in each one. To get out any air bubbles, you just wanna drop your cake pan onto the counter just a couple times. All right, these look good. Now we're gonna bake them for about 25 minutes or until a toothpick inserted comes out clean. While our cakes are cooling, we're gonna make the frosting. Now, traditional red velvet cakes are made with cream cheese frosting, and it tastes wonderful with the mild chocolate cake. But today, we're updating this classic with a white chocolate cream cheese frosting. This recipe is super simple. We're gonna start by beating one block of cream cheese and a half a stick of butter. And once that's nice and creamy, we're gonna add six ounces of melted white chocolate that's already been cooled. Now that that's nice and whipped, we're gonna gradually add two cups of powdered sugar. Continue mixing until it's nice and smooth. Great, this looks awesome. Now that our frosting's made, our cakes are cooled, I'm gonna show you how to level them so that every layer is perfectly even. So you wanna do this using a serrated knife. Basically all you're gonna do, we're gonna get rid of that nice little dome part, but don't worry, we're gonna save it for later. Now it's time to frost them. And we're actually gonna crumb coat them. This is something that seals in all these little green crumbs so that when you actually frost it, all you see is the beautiful white frosting. So you're gonna start by putting a little bit of frosting on this cake board. These are really easy to find. It's just a piece of cardboard that I covered with some wax paper. And put your first layer right on top. Make sure it's nice and secure. All right, then we're gonna put another little bit of frosting right in the middle. And so since we're making a layered cake, this frosting is really important. You want it to be the same amount on each layer so that when we slice into it, you have that perfect ratio of frosting to cake. Next layer. Oh my God, this looks so good. And then for the final layer, I'm gonna flip it over because the bottom is nice and flat. Give it a little squeeze. Now we're gonna crumb coat the cake. This is what every professional baker does to seal all those little crumbs in before we frost it. So you really don't have to be perfect with this. We just wanna coat the entire thing. And as you can see, my cake is kind of not stable like I would want it. If that happens, depending on how many layers of cake and frosting you have, you just wanna insert these little dowels. I'm using lollipop sticks. You can also use bamboo skewers. It's important to let your guests know that they're in there before you cut the cake. Once your cake is coated, we're gonna put it in the refrigerator for about 30 minutes or until your frosting has set. 
Now that our cake has been in the fridge, it's crumb coated, so all those crumbs are locked in. You can even see the frosting is nice and hard, which is exactly what we want. So now I'm gonna frost the cake by just putting a ton right on top, and then I'm gonna work it down the side. So using an offset spatula, I'm just guiding the frosting down the side of the cake while also turning it. Once your cake is done being frosted, we're gonna add a little bit of cake crumbles. Remember the leftover cake that we had when I leveled the layers? Well, I just broke them up into little pieces, and now I'm just gonna sprinkle them right on top to get that little hint of green. And then since this is a white chocolate cream cheese frosted cake, I'm gonna add some white chocolate shavings. Ah, oh, these look so good. This is what takes this cake from average to gourmet. Mmm. All right, now I'm gonna cut the cake. I cannot wait. This is the best part, when you get to see all the layers. Oh, man. Oh my gosh! There you go. I just love the element of surprise when you cut into the cake. I mean, look at those layers of green velvet. Gotta give it a try. That is the best white chocolate buttercream frosting. That cake is just so light and fluffy. If you make this cake for your friends, they will be absolutely stunned. This cake is so rich and decadent, delicious. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Brandy. I'll see you next time we eat the trend on Pop Sugar.